And I think that like the number one thing that I've, that I've learned from this process is that you can't lose at this. And I think this transfers to a lot of things, family, relationships, sure. business. Yep, yep. But if you don't quit oddly, you cannot lose. Mm. If you don't stop moving forward, you're going to get the W. And that's amazing because that's very, there's very few things in life where like consistency trumps yes. uh, talent. Welcome to the Audacious Living Podcast, hosted by my man, Audley Stevenson, the odd man. He'll unpack wisdom and insights from a cross-section of top quality performers in business, media, sports, entertainment, and lifestyle to uncover key elements to help you live your best audacious life ever. So without further ado, here is the odd man. Greetings and salutations, I'm Audley Stevenson, and welcome to the Audacious Living Podcast. Uh, hands down, this is the most audacious podcast that you'll find on the internet, and whether you're returning or you're here for the first time, I, I say thank you for, for tuning in uh, and being a part of our journey as we help our listeners live their most audacious life ever, and that's our ongoing goal, and so I thank you for being a part of our journey. You can connect with us through our social media channels, we're on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. You also can find us on YouTube if you subscribe to our YouTube channel simply by tapping the bell down below and you'll be connected. So certainly like, follow, subscribe, and share and be a part of our ongoing conversation. Now on this episode, I will be joined by Nate Palmer. Nate is a fitness and nutrition coach. Uh, he's a speaker uh, as well as being an author and uh, uh, he's dedicated to his craft. I uh, certainly loves helping his clients reach their fitness and weight loss goals. And you know, Nate, Nate does it by a simple method, which, and we've all heard, I'm gonna use the, the C word because he helps his clients reach their goals by preaching consistency. It's that simple. We've all heard it. We know it. It's what Nate does. And, and, and the whole idea of constantly moving forward to get to that goal, to get to that W, to get that win that we're searching for. Now, uh, you know, and if you think about it, if, if being successful is the goal, then we've got to put in the work. There's no if, ands, or buts about it. Now, uh, uh, you know, Nate and I, we have a wonderful conversation. One of the things that we talk about uh, is, a, is the topic of progress. And he introduces a marvelous concept that really, readily doesn't come to mind uh, when people think uh, of progress, particularly when, when they attach them to their goals. And that concept they introduce is the idea of maintenance being a form of progress. If you can maintain your current level without deviating, then you're still headed in the right direction. And I know this can be tough for a lot of people to, to conceptualize or understand because they want to see that dial or needle move. And when it doesn't move, they oftentimes think that they have it or they feel that they haven't made any kind of progress or haven't achieved anything. But this is not true. You know, if you think about it, with, with so much things that come into, you know, come in our way over the course of our lives and that can pull us back or, or deviate us or knock us off course, there's much to be proud of when it comes to staying, holding firm and not faltering. Maintenance is a form of progress. It's a great way to continually encourage ourselves as we give ourselves credit and that credit is well-deserved. You know, it really is a great chat Nate and I had, and I think that you'll all appreciate. So without any further ado, here's my conversation with Nate Palmer. Enjoy. Nate, how are you? I appreciate you joining me here on the Audacious Living Podcast. I'm so excited to be here. Thanks for having me on, Oddly. I've been looking forward to this, man. This has been good. I, I'm glad you're here as well. Um, you know, you, 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 you got a lot of energy first off and foremost, and, and you know, people always talk about my energy level is high and I, I love it when I see someone else want to go, wow, he's got a lot of energy too. So, uh, great that you're here. Um, 
want to get into your story because you've got a sort of unique perspective uh, as it relates to sort of success and and fitness and health and and how the, all all are connected. So maybe I don't know, let's let's kind of start there and sort of get into sort of what you're doing these days. Yeah, yeah, sounds good. So you want to start with like what like what I I'm actually doing in the moment, how I got into this. Well, I tell you, I tell you, let's let's time travel. Let's go in the beginning. Let's, let's go time, back. Let's let's go back. So so when you were a little embryo, no. no as a, <laughs> <laughs> so I was born in 1987. Really good year. <laughs> yeah. So that. So 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 you you you. Well, okay then. Let's let's. We're getting serious now. Okay, serious. We're getting sorry. Serious. I'm sorry. Yeah. Let's get. Let's let's rein it in. <laughs> You're wild. So let's let's. Okay. Let's get started. So g- g- give me the origin story. I mean, every every good uh, superhero's got an origin story. So what's yours? Man, I got a lot of like underdog stories that never really like came to fruition. I never ended up being like an NBA star or like, yeah. you know, a karate champion, yeah. like despite like my best efforts. But yeah. I really got into fitness. When I look back on it, there was a specific time, specific like day when I was at home by myself. My mom was dropping my sisters off at school and someone broke into my house. Okay. And so I'm 11. I grab a steak knife out the knife block and I go hide under my bed, lock my door with a little rinky dink lock. And then I hear this guy coming down the hallway. We got hardwood floor. He's like, boom, boom, boom. Yep. And he pounds on my door. Okay. And I'm like, I guess I'll die right now. Mm. And if I look back, I kind of, I kind of point that to that moment of, of like, you know, I kind of had a chaotic childhood as a lot of us did, but I pointed that moment as like feeling like completely out of control. I had no control over anything. Uh, I felt powerless, just no autonomy whatsoever. And I remember being like that. I can't do that anymore. That just, I just, it just so, it hurts me so much. I have to be in control now. And I was like, you know, what's going to ha- It's going to help if I've got huge muscles and a beard and earrings and a man bun and well, not the man bun, but no one will ever mess with me again. Right. You know, that was kind of my thought. I want to look like Arnold and predator. Yep. Right? That was like, that's my hero. Yep. And so that kind of kicked off this lifelong like pursuit of physical culture and strength and what was great about it that i think a lot of us deal with in in different ways is that at the start i'm running away from something that was scary hurtful fearful you know so whether you're you have a similar story to me or you're feeling like oh i like i don't want to be heavy i don't want to look like this i don't want to feel like this energy or your doctor's like hey you need to like look at these triglycerides we often start this journey being running away from something right Mm -hmm. And thank God that story doesn't end there because I know a lot of people in fitness who are gigantic monstrosities Mm -hmm. that still feel like that scare hurt little boy. And they, and you know, you know who I'm talking about. Like you got someone who comes to mind when I say that because they never got over that thing and they never started pursuing this in a healthy way. It's still all about like being big and intimidating because inside they, they have a lot of pain. Mm. So thankfully I was able to transition into rather than running from fear, pursuing something, I think, greater, right. pursuing the ability and pursuing growth. And I think that like the number one thing that I've, that I've learned from this process is that you can't lose at this. And I think this transfers to a lot of things, family, relationships, business. Sure. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. But if you don't quit oddly, you cannot lose. Mm. If you don't stop moving forward, you're going to get the W. And that's amazing because that's very, there's very few things in life where like consistency trumps yes. uh, talent. Right. Right. And, and, and consistency is the big word in this, like that by far. And I, and I love, and I love your last point how it trumps talent because oftentimes you're, 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 you're being consistent with something you're making progress. You just don't recognize it because it's so infinitesimal. It's so small that you're going, ah, but when you stop, like, I, I, I think back um, uh, to the, the karate kid, right? Daniel's son, wax on, wax off. And, you know, he's going, huh, I'm not doing it. And all of a sudden, you know, he, he gets taught the lessons. And, oh, wait, okay, that's how you do the crane. And, and it ties it all together. So that, that that's kind of where I'm going with that. Totally. Yeah. So I think that it's like that it's, it laid a foundation for me that I think has served me well in a lot of other arenas outside of physical fitness. Right. One question I like to ask my clients and I remember before we start working together is like, Hey, oddly, if this took you twice as long as it takes other people, if it takes you five times as long, would it still be worth it for you? And I think that that, like that can put you in the right mental state to like be able to lay the foundation rather than wanting that Amazon prime. I like, I hit the button. I need it to show up tomorrow. Right. Right. I got results yesterday, like sort of thing where you, 
where it kind of transitions you to being like the journey is a lot of, in a lot of ways, the destination here, the yeah. lessons you learn aren't from looking in the mirror and being like, I look awesome. It's from that, that time you're like, I do not want to do this next set. And then you do it anyways. Right. And that is transformational, right. not necessarily how great of abs you have. Man, man, I love that question because that really forces you to put you in that mindset of, you know, what we're trying to do here. And the reality is why we're doing it, right? It, it, I think it brings you back to the why. Why are you here? Why did you commit to you and I to do this together? Because if you're not clear on that, it's easy to falter, fall off, quit, give up and stop. Or, or like even worse than that, I work, just, I work mostly with men now, but like I work with brides and stuff and brides are amazing clients right up until the wedding day. Then they're the worst <laughs> because they hit a superficial goal. I want to look like X, for my beach vacation. I want to look like this in my yeah. wedding dress. I yeah. want to lose five pounds, run a 5k. Who gives a shit? That's not important. Right. What's important is like that. Let's go one level deeper. I want to be healthy. Eh, I want to go like one, one level deeper. I want to be able to like be able to run for my kids. Okay. Why is that? Because I need to be the man that I needed when I was growing up. Boom. Okay. Now that's your why. That's a good why. Now you can take that and run with that and take that into perpetuity rather than being like, okay, May 10th, I'm done. Right. Right. And the reality is we're never really done anyways. Yeah. <laughs> we're not done. And, and why would you want to be done? Right? And there's so much more to achieve, right? I, so um, I was talking to uh, one of my wife's grandma the other day and she was like, I don't want to learn anything else. And I was like, <laughs> I love it. Like, <laughs> I love it. That is like, I mean, that like, it like bummed me out a little bit because yeah. if you're not learning, if you have right. no desire for growth at all, right. What are you going to do? Just like, just slowly drift into the abyss. Right. Just like existence is just this slog, this day to day, like mundane, like mundane. It's just, it just like, it just kind of, it made me sad because I was like, well then why even bother? Mm. Why bother waking up if you don't have anything that you want to learn anymore or no growth you want to pursue? Right. It's like, you know, like that is, it's so like, it's so cliche to say the journey is the destination, but like yeah. ask anyone who's gotten to the top yeah. you know, of whatever it is, a mountain, their physical health, financial success. And they're going to tell you, yeah, it's good. But it's not like, it's, it's not what I thought it was going to be. No. Well, well, and I think because you don't, you've never been there before, you know, so you, you don't know exactly. Sure. You can guess and you can speculate and maybe you can talk to people that have been there, but you yourself don't know till you get there. And that's why there, there, there's definitely uh, value in, in, in taking advantage of the steps along the way and really appreciating the journey and really looking at the entire scope that it's not just me arriving because you never arrive. That's, and that's a secret. I think that like supplement companies and magazines won't tell people mm. you don't ever arrive. Like, because like, like on, like there's two sides of that coin. Number one, like, why would you ever want to be done and be like, I did it. I like, I'm finished. You know, like I'm not like kind of the service that looks, that sounds good, but like, again, it just, it's just stagnant is what it is. But on the other side of that, of that, um, once you get to a certain level of success, success yeah. becomes addictive right. and it's like, okay, well, like, okay. I, I bench press 200 pounds. Well, can I get it for two now? I made a million dollars. Well, can I make 2 million this year? You know, like there's always another level. And once you start to achieve it and feel it, like, then it's like, it's this, this addictive process, like checking Instagram, you got that red bubble. You're like, Ooh, I got people who like me following me, you know, yeah, yeah. And it gives you that dopamine rush. Yeah. 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 Tell me going back to that story when your childhood, do you remember when you kind of connected the dots to that experience and how you can transcend that the rest of your life? Yeah, it actually wasn't until like really recently. I was, uh, wow. I was, I was doing a, like a, a five part training on belly fat in my Facebook community. It was okay. the weirdest, it's a weird way to start the story. But I was doing a five part training on belly fat and I was talking about like, like some, someone was kind of like, we're just tuning in. It was a live. So people were asking me questions and someone was like, how did you get into this? And I was like, you know, I think it kind of came from this. And people were like, what? That's an insane story. And I was like, yeah, the more I think about it, the more I like, those pieces fit together because after that, like, I, like I didn't deal with it in the most healthy way. I didn't get in the gym. I was like, Oh, I'm doing great now. You know, there's like, uh, like a seven or eight year period where I just sucked at working out right. and being consistent, right. but I did buy a ton of knives on eBay. Okay. I was an 11, okay. 12 year old kid. There you go. <laughs> I had a taser. I'd like take my mom and dad are divorced. I'd take the taser from my mom's house, to my dad's house, bring in my backpack to school and stuff. Like <laughs> just like, just like really suspect stuff that like a yeah, 12 yeah, year old yeah. should be rocking a, like a taser in middle school. Uh, 
And, and, that, and that guy never showed up again. You're waiting for that guy to show up, right? Never happened. Yeah. yeah. So like now I'm now I'm big and strong. So like when I, if I see him, I'm just gonna run away so fast he'll never be able to catch me. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. But you know, what, 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 what we're laughing about, joking about, but it, it really goes back to you know the things that happened in our childhood and 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 sort of the the long term impacts that they can in, on the rest of our lives, especially if we're not cognizant or aware of them, right? And, and and think about it, like oftentimes we're doing things and we don't really know why we do, we just do it just because, and we don't make that linkage to, oh yeah, when I was a kid, let's say, this is what happened and here's why. Yeah, and I think it's important to like ask yourself, going in, going back to the why, why do I believe that? Why do I think that? And I've got a couple of friends who are amazing at asking this question, yep. where I'll just drop something in conversation that I just assume to be true or have thought for a long time is true. And they'll be like, wait, like, why do you think, why do you like, why do you need that? Like the other day I was like talking to my friends, he's like a multimillionaire, he's eight, makes eight figures, like so, so wealthy. And I was like, man, how do you find meaning in your work? Mm. And he was, and like, I'm like, that's a great question. I'm kind of a genius for asking it. And he was like, why do you feel like work has to be meaningful? I was like, Ooh, Ooh. like yeah. why, you're right. Why, why do I feel like that? And I like, think that like taking a step back to ask those types of questions can be really impactful and help you unravel that, you know, with like, without having to like spend years in therapy, which, you know, for some of us might be still be a good idea. Yeah, I love you. I hear you. I hear you. <laughs> I, like, I hear you totally. So, so, so fast forward now, you know, you, 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 you've made this connection. You recognize that, you know, the significance in, in uh, 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 putting in the work to dedicate to your own body and your own self. What made you get to the point where you wanted to help others? Because that there's one thing you do it for yourself, the entire different thing we get you focus on others. Yeah, so I think that a lot of a lot of trainers start off in the kind of the same way. They're like they care about people, but like they just love exercise and they want to be around it and want to see more of it. And so I was graduating University of Arizona in 2009, and um, my senior year, I had this funny situation where every single year I always got enrolled as the previous semester. So I try to get registered for senior classes, but they're like ju you're a junior status. So I was able to go and crash these classes. So I always got like the bottom of the barrel, just like the shittiest classes. Like, hey, it's a 7 a.m. environmental psychology class. And it's like taught by this guy who's like, in my day, we would never. And I was like, I'm out. But I just had to be in these classes. So I never loved going to school. Right. I kind of just went for, I wanted the diploma. I wanted to hang out with my friends, you know, and stuff. But all of my other time I spent when I should have been researching and reading and writing my whatevers, yeah. I would read thousands, oddly, thousands of articles on T nation, bodybuilding.com, ask men, breaking muscle. I read archives, man, just so, so many. I was like, I love this stuff. I wanted to know all about nutrition and, and all about physical training. And I was writing programs myself and writing programs for my buddies and yep. doing all this stuff. And so when I graduated, I don't know if you remember 2009, not a lot of jobs for recently graduated students. You know, everyone was like, sorry, you gotta have 15 years of experience and we'll start you at $12 an hour. And I was right. like, uh, so I was like, I've been in commission-based sales for my entire life. Let me get into the gym. I'll just work as a trainer until right. I figure out what I want to be when I grow up. Mm. And I got to work at a, on a, a great gym in Arizona. Got to work with all kinds of people, athletes and old, older people, older populations yep. Yep. and people who have chronic pain and then people who want to build muscle and people who are just pure fat loss. So I got to try it, like to work with a ton of people, see kind of who I vibed with and what I liked. Mm -hmm. And um, I, I kind of thought at that point, I was like, this, this could work out for me. And then I was like, I probably need health insurance. I'm gonna get a real job. Got a real job for like three months. And I was like, this is not going to work out for me if I want to stay sane and alive. Right. So luckily I had a, like an amazing mentor at the time who was like, you need to open your own gym. Wow. And I was like, I don't know. It sounds pretty scary. He's like, don't worry about it. You got this. Let's go. So I quit that job, uh, started my own gym. And I was like, this is, this is it. This is like, this is what I want to do. This feels, this feels good. So, so the, the amazing part about that is when, you know, you, you, you make that leap. So in your case, quitting my job, right? And, and so, and it, it ties in very much, you know, on this podcast, we oftentimes talk about boldness and doing these audacious things and, and going out and, and, and that would fall in that category, uh, especially when it wasn't like you thought of it. Someone said to you, you need to go do this. And you're, you're, you're taking this leap of faith. Well, I was like, like I was working on quitting that job just because I walked into the training day one and I was like, oh, this is, this is soul ruining for me to sit here at a desk and have someone tell me stuff. 
Whew, no, thank you. I'd rather work 60 hours for myself than 40 hours for any other person on the planet. So, but yeah, like that, like, so that was good. I was like, I was applying it like Boca de Beppo and like, just like, Hey, I'll, I'll take any job to be out of this. So I can walk around again, and stop being right. bossed around by these people. So really glad it ended up be, like being that. So I loved that job. thought it was amazing. Had some amazing clients. Sure got married. And so, um, you know, we liked it so much that I sold that. And we, my wife and I moved to Seattle where we didn't have any friends or job or connections at all. And we just decided to see what happened out there. And you sort of picked any place is that kind of why it was, between, it was between Seattle and Denver, uh, okay. just because kind of like West coast, okay. close, close ish to home places. We've never like been Seattle has like some really cool, like outdoor stuff. Denver has like the mountains and, and skiing, snowboarding. So gotcha. we kind of, we flipped a coin and then uh, Seattle, it was, we ended up there for like four years, worked in an amazing gym out there. I got a job. Great. Great yeah. for me. Okay. Um, with like 150 other trainers working at this amazing, like 450,000 square foot gym. It was insane. Everyone there was like love fitness and love education. So I, I, it was such an amazing place to work. I liked it so much that my wife and I sold all of our stuff. And we moved to South America. Oh, okay. <laughs> I love that. I love these big bold leaps. So one to the next. So go here. We'll go yeah, you, you said audacious. Let's go. <laughs> I love it. Go for the ride. That's amazing. So, so when when you sort of look at uh, uh, like like the conversation of success and being successful, right? And then how how that connects to fitness because there is there there is a correlation between the two. I don't know if you can, if you can comment on that, Donnie. Yeah. So I think that like it kind of goes back to that consistency. Like whatever you want is on the other side of hard work, discipline, and consistency. Right. Any, like, because like most of us are not like, hey, I wanna be an NFL athlete. And if I said that, like really good for me, but like, I just don't have the skills, talent, dexterity, any of that to play at that level. Right. Could I have gotten there? Maybe if I started at like, you know, like age two or three, yeah, maybe, but like, I can't, I won't be an NFL athlete. It's outside of my abilities. Right. But for so many of us, we still like play in this, in this arena where we think that like, where our, our talents, our like raw intelligence are dictating our success in life. And we don't realize that these rules that we like, that we kind of have ingrained in ourselves from childhood, yeah. they're made up. They're made up by people who are just like us, who just made up some rules. And now we've bought into them. We believe them. So I think fitness is a great way to reinvent yourself, reinvent like because every, every action you take, I firmly believe that every action you're taking on a daily basis, whether it's drinking water, eating McDonald's, going yeah. for walks, working out, it's a vote. Okay. You're voting for the type of person that you're becoming. Ah. And so I think that fitness is an amazing way to cast those ballots in a way that's like, I'm disciplined. I'm consistent. I'm health-minded. I, like, I, I do the hard stuff. And I think that when we have those votes, and like I've been casting those votes for years and years and years, I finally just believe it, you know, like if, so if I say, Hey, I'm moving to South America, it's done. My word is bond. It's going to happen. If I say my book is going to be written in December, my book is going to be written in December because I just believe that I can't fail at stuff because I've shown myself that I can show up over and over and over and over again when it's hard. And it doesn't even have to be successful. I don't have to be nice. good at the fitness. Right. I don't have to be good at business. I don't have to be good at writing a book, but to know that I'm going to do it anyways. Mm. The power of self-belief, Nate. I mean, that's that, that's the difference in all this. Like, you know, you can you, you can go into a situation, start a new adventure, do a new business, new job, whatever relationship, whatever that is. But if you believe that you can be successful, you, you'll find a way to get there, even if you don't have the answers in front of you. Totally. And this also gets me into trouble a lot because, like, I roll up to things and I'm like, I'm gonna kill it, and then I suck. I started stand up oddly. I started that like a class like a couple of weeks ago. Yeah. Yep. And I was like, I'm funny. I say yeah. funny things all the time. Yep. And then I went to the class and I was like, blah, 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 blah. And the guy was like, none of that's good. <laughs> I was like, uh oh. I'm in trouble. <laughs> yeah. It's funny. I um I I I I remember once going up on an open mic night for stand up and very similar experience. Like, man, I got some good stuff. No, you don't. <laughs> no, you don't. <laughs> But yeah, you know what? I crossed it off the bucket list. I said, hey, I'm going to go up and do stand-up. And I did. So there we go. And it's I said, good for, yeah, I good for you. I, I didn't say my, my bucket list didn't say I had to be funny. It said go and do open mic, right? So I did it. I <laughs> love it. 
I think that like that kind of that thing though, like when I get kind of slapped down a little bit though, like it's highly motivating for me. I'm like, really? You don't think I'm funny? Well, watch me work really hard at it for a long time until I'm medium funny. And 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 that's you no, know, I mean, and, and we joke about this. There's, there's some truth to that. Like you know, look at the end of the day, you know, we we all have different things that motivate us and get us to where we want to go. And sometimes it's adversity, sometimes it's the the opinion of others, sometimes internally, like wherever it is, tap into it and use it, and make yourself go. Yeah. Have you seen the uh, the Last Dance? Yeah. Oh yeah. Okay. So like, I love in that in there is like there's a scene in that I think in like episode four or five where Jordan is talking about what gets him motivated. Yep. And he's talking, he's talking about how one of the, like, um, I don't remember if it was like jazz or Pistons players, or whatever, like he said, he bumped into him and said, Hey, good game. And he was like, good game. He told me good game. <laughs> and he just got so riled up about it. And he goes down this rabbit hole. And then like two minutes later, it's like him sit back in the chair. He's like, yeah, he never said that. I made that up. <laughs> <And he's> like, <laughs> But it, but but it, but it's sort of get yourself going, right? Yeah, and it's funny that's because you don't want to talk shit to, Jordan. Well, well, but here's the thing: there's people like that you don't want to say nothing to because you don't know what they'll take, how they'll use it, and how they'll fuel themselves, right? And and yeah, I, like, like if you see these like on the on the uh, field stuff with like people talking shit to Tom Brady, like, and then he's like, okay, watch well, this. True. You yeah, you don't want to give like an animal like it's that ammunition. True. And, and the thing and the thing is, what's so hard is that they're looking for it. They're looking for those things to get them going. So even if you just said, hey, good luck, what are you wishing me good luck for? You don't think I'm good? I'll prove it to you, right? It's just like you can't win. Because, we'll talk to him. But yeah, don't say nothing. Or actually, oh, you're ignoring me? Okay, I'll show you. Like, you, know what I mean? like, you can't win with those people because there'll always be something. And as we, again, as we joke about, there's, you know, I think there's something that you can take away from that. Like, you know, what is your fuel? What is your fire? What gets you going? And if you can figure that out, then you're halfway there. I love having a negative and a positive fuel, right? Like on one hand, we'd already talked about like, what's your why? Well, I want to walk my daughter down the aisle at her wedding. You know, sure. like, yeah, I want to be able to throw down some like stick moves, you know, when I'm, when I'm 82 and still like, and still, ha still got it. You know, that's my like positive why, right? So it keeps me going. But I also like the negative why. My doctor told me as like a 13 year old, he said, you're an exercise non-responder. You'll never be able to gain muscle. I still resent that, Dr. Ed. <laughs> if you you think so? <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. I, I had a, uh, I had a, uh, a teacher in, in high school that told my mom that all I would amount to be was a janitor. All he'll ever be is a janitor. And first off, first off, I was like, whoa, teachers do that? Like, really? Like, but, but then, you know, that, got, that caught me off guard. But second is like, okay, you'll see. You're, I, I know you're wrong, but we'll see. So again, it goes right to what we're talking about, that whole thing about what well, gets you going, what motivates you, right? So yeah, I'll show you. I'll show you. Don't don't worry. Don't wait up. I'll show that's you. Right. That's right. That's right. So so um, your, your work now, you you, you speak, you, you author. I mean, you talk about your book. Let's just get into that. Like what uh, what's happened with that? So I wrote two books. Um, this one that just came out in February is called The Million Dollar Body Method. Yeah. It's it's um, basically a step-by-step -step framework that teaches people not necessarily what to eat, but how to eat in a way that creates superhuman, superhuman focus and energy okay. while utilizing like your body's stored fat reserves to power that. So how do you eat in a way that gives you energy and focus, lets you be on all day? My clients are not athletes. My clients are mental athletes. They need to be focused. They need to be dialed in. They're doing podcasts. They're writing emails. They're closing deals. That's who, that's who I talk to. So if people are needing to be like focused and can't be dragging because it costs them money. This is it. This is the, this is the, like, this is your nutrition Bible. And what's great is you can do it paleo. You can do it with the Mediterranean diet. You can do whatever kind of foods you like or want, right. but I teach you how to eat them and what times to eat them to get the best result possible. Um, I, so I, I like this book because it's very step-by-step. -step. It's very actionable. It's, it's like a four-week plan. Okay, okay. I, uh, I'd love to give it away at the end of this. I want to make sure I always come with the gift. You know? Oh, for sure, yeah. My, uh, my, second, my first book is called Passport Fitness. It was based on my wife and I traveling and like, okay. how do I stay in shape while on the road? A lot of my clients at the time were like pharmaceutical sales reps and people who were traveling around a lot. The book didn't sell very well in 2020. I don't, not sure why, what something was going on, but you know, whatever. Um, but the book, that book is, I think is funny. I wrote a, I, like, this one's a little less, like I'd have a little less jokes and like anecdotes and stuff in there, but that book I wrote about like 
getting bit by crocodiles, thinking I was going to get stabbed in, right. in Colombia, all this stuff. Um, Did you have your taser t- with you? What's that? Did you have your taser with you for the crocodile? Ooh, no, no. Just a bottle full of rum and some bad <laughs> ideas, man. I love it. I love it. I know that I know this is a podcast. So you can't really see this for other people, but that's I got a I fell out of a boat one time and okay. caught that spectacled caiman. That's Ooh. awesome. That's a it tells a great is story. It, is it? <laughs> it tells a great story. That's right. That's right. <laughs> um, uh, you're, the, 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 you're, you're, the, so the million dollar it's called the million dollar. Pull that up again there. Million dollar body method. Million dollar body method. Now, now, now. I, I, the piece I like and you touched touch on is that you teach people how, right? Uh, and I think that's really, really important because when we talk about nutrition and, and eating right, we, we've, we've kind of heard them all before in a sense, right? It's like you, you, there's nothing new that's being uncovered, but it's the teaching how piece and how to apply those. I think that's the key in what we're talking about here. Yeah. And I, like, I will say though, that I don't think a lot of people are teaching this. It's, it's because it's again, based on growth and becoming more and the fitness industry is inherently like you think about the words that we use in fitness and and weight loss, right? Weight loss, drop fat, like decrease lower. All those words are all about becoming less fitting into a box. What this is, is about becoming more using your nutrition and your training to power your lifestyle. So it's like, how do you get better? And like, I've been in marketing now for a really long time. I run my own business. I'm the marketing, the accounting, the, I'm the janitor, tutorial services, (laughs) shipping and handling all, I'm all of it. I got you. So what we, they teach in marketing is you got to deliver the what and the why, but don't tell them the how, sell them the how, Mm. right? So, and and like, normally this book would be like, you need to um, do training. And it's like, why? Well, because it's good for you. It helps you increase bone density. It gives you better metabolism. You're going to be able to eat more tacos. Great. Go ahead. And people are like, wait, what, what should I do then? I didn't want to have a book like that because I feel like a lot of coaches will do that where it's like now buy my program. It's it's only 1999, you know? Um, So I just gave it all away. I I want someone to go pick this book up in 20 years when I, I'm not, maybe I'm into crocodile wrestling exclusively at that time. Who knows? knows? But I want someone to pick it up and be able to get a great result because this, like this transcends diets, fat, like fads, supplements, and it gives them people a structure and like a formula, right? It's like, once you have the recipe for something, you can kind of play with it and make it your own and add stuff here and pull stuff out. I want you to have the recipe. Nobody knows this recipe and it blows my mind because this is so much more impactful than losing five pounds. Right. If you have like, you have more energy to show up for your family, for your tribes, your trade, yeah. like how much more damage can you do? Like it in a, in a positive way, well, you know? Well, well, no, good question. But I think the piece, the, the piece that I think is really fascinating and very important as well is after you, so if the goal is five pounds, and, and you and you do that five pounds, what do you do next? Or what what does what does the next look like? And but so when you're teaching this entire method, that next tr- that you know that method trans into the next and it becomes a way of life. Yeah, and it's easy too, because like people tell me all the time, I want to eat pizza, I want to have like will I ever be able to drink again? Will I ever be able to have yeah, you can do all the stuff. You've got to make those choices based around the formula. And the formula is not hard at all. I make graph like little infographics about it all the time because it's yeah. just so simple. Yeah. But like, I think like what you said is right. Like once you hit your goal, like, it's not like, oh man, I, I lost five pounds. I can't wait to get back to having low energy and feeling like shit in the afternoon. Like <laughs> no one says that. No one you know, says so, that, right? So you, well, like the goal is here's like, here's my, like, I love this. This is my love language, right? People go, they start with me. They work with me. They're like, I lost some weight. I'm like, great job. They're like, I feel so good. My energy is so high. I'm like, awesome. That's fantastic. And then they say this thing, they go. It doesn't even feel like I'm on a diet. This is just how I eat now. It's normal. I'm like, yes, yes, yes. yes. Rocky, Rocky punching the sky. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because you, 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 you wanted to make it your way of being, how you live your life. It's ingrained in you that you're not thinking about it. You just adopt it. And 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 what I love about that is that mindset, that attitude, that can transcend into other aspects of your life. Totally. Yeah. Cause I think if you're looking for growth, if you're looking for opportunities to become more, you start seeing the world in a different lens. You know, if you're, if you're always like, I'm too much, I need to drop weight. I need to lose size. I need to decrease my pants. Like, it, like it just puts you in a different frame. And I would say like uh, women are very, very like targeted by this too. Like it puts you in a negative, negative state. 
right. like they say in the NFL, like the best ability is availability, right? So if you can always show up and you always have energy and you're always focused and you're reliable and people can count on you. And like I said earlier, your word is like, is exactly what's going to take place. Right. Then like, then you are playing in a totally different ballpark yeah. than everybody else. You're just operating at another level. Yeah. And, that, and that's the goal is getting, getting, how do you get yourself to that other level and change, you know, cause that's a game changer. It really is totally, totally yeah. game changer. So I, I, I love it. I love I mean, it. You've had those days, right? Oddly where you're like, I'm killing it today. I'm the smartest. Yes. I'm dominating everything. I'm doing touch turns to gold. You know what yeah. I'm talking about, right? Well, absolutely. I wake up like that every day. That's <laughs> what I'm talking about. That's, that's the goal. But, 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 but I think that's a great goal. Is we, again, we joke about, but it's a, it's a great goal to have and a great place to be. Cause it, 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 it it's kind of like the stars are all in lot a line, right? And they all, sure. everything. Lines. And how much more powerful is it if we can manufacture that rather than just relying on the stars, yeah. right? Man, that's money. It really that's is. It. Yeah, it's a million so, dollars. <laughs> so and yeah, it's right. So it's 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 understanding that for learning that formula and applying it consistently. And you're gonna, you know, consistently is the key in this, right? You gotta keep going. Hundred percent. Yeah. Because if you don't if you don't quit, you can't lose. That's it. You got it. You, it, it. It must feel good to see clients reach your goal. I, I, I mean, you you probably get such satisfaction from that when you know a client comes in and is like, "This is what I'm after. I'm here." You help me. Thank you. Life is fantastic. What was, what's, what talk, talk about that a little bit. I mean, I love it. Like, and I feel like I used to be like addicted to like that clients, like hitting those milestones and like seeing the weight come off. I had a guy who was 550 pounds, dropped 300 pounds with me. Um, and that like, you know, like that feels really good, but more, like, as I've been like later and later in my profession now, so I've been training for about almost 13 years now. Um, what I started to see is like, I'm less worried about people's results and I'm more worried about what's the maintenance look like? And the maintenance is just like the least sexy thing in the entire world to talk about. And that's why no one sells it. Right. But like, I'd much rather hear someone tell me, this is just how I eat now. I went whole holiday season and I lost a pound rather than someone being like, I lost 12 pounds this month. That's awesome. And I'm like, okay, cool. Don't sh- like, don't stop, keep it going. But like, right. let's see what you got next. Right? right. So, or my, or my client who's like, Hey, I lost 50 pounds and ended in J- July. And you know what? I'm still, I'm still that same weight because maintenance is progress. So I love hearing that story. Like, not just like I dropped weight, but like I changed my life and here's what, here's what's good about it. Yeah. I love that line. Maintenance is progress. Uh, I, I, I don't think that can be overstated because, uh, because what, what you, what you also are doing is giving yourself credit for what you've done. Right. And, and, and I think that's a big piece in this that you we have to, it's almost like having milestones or check marks, right? Along the way. Because that tells you, yep, we're on the right path. Keep going. Yep, we're in the right, right direction. Keep it moving. And it motivates you. So it's so important to do that. Yeah. And I think that a lot of times, like especially high performers, entrepreneurs, business owners, we're always like on to the next, on to the next, on to the next, type A, hard charging, right? We don't take the time to like look back and be like, yo, two years ago this was outside of my scope of what I even thought was possible. Right. Last year, I only thought I could do X and now I'm here. And, but like, we're still like, like we talked about before, like we're still onto the next, onto the next. Right. So it's sometimes it's nice to be like, Hey, you know what? I like, Oh, I didn't have any growth this year. Yeah. But you stayed the same as you yeah. did in your biggest growth yeah. year last year. Like yeah. amazing job. Yeah. You know? Yeah. No, I love it. I, I love it. Give you maintenance is progress. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to walk over that in my back of my head because it's huge. If that wasn't such a non-sexy episode title, you, you t- call the episode that, but <laughs> you I'm, I'm be like, ah, next. Mark my words. I'm going to use that. I am going to use that because it All is right. that. I think it's all, yeah, you just saved me. I have to think of a title. There we go. <laughs> Uh-oh. Just be, just be prepared. People are like, ah, maintenance. I'm not listening to the maintenance episode. <laughs> That's awesome. Man, all, my, all my top episodes are like the sexiest, tightest way to do 40 pounds of weight loss and then yeah. i would do one that's like hey here's what you should do to like really maintain and to walk more and people are like john heard it oh yeah that's right that's right i love it i love it man Nate, this has been really cool i appreciate you uh well first i had a lot of fun first off but i think really the key in this outside of knowing that maintenance is progress uh that you know that, that you know there's some real the, the markers the milestones we talked about the, the understanding the why uh that's important as well all of these fit things fit into our overall success. And I think the big, big thing uh, is imp- understanding, you know, what success is because my success obviously will be different from yours, from Sally, from Jimmy. And, you know, as we go through this, 
as easy as it is to look at someone else, we really should be focusing on what we want for ourselves. Love it. Yeah. Figure out your why, then work backwards, baby. That's it. That's it. For our listeners who want to catch up with you, learn about you, grab your books, where can we set them, Nate? Oh, yeah. Good question. So love to show up with a gift. Um, basically, you can go to Amazon. You can pick the book up. It's like 15 bucks or leave me a review. It'd be so nice. Love you forever. Or if you want it for free, I'll send you a Kindle or, an, or a PDF version. All you got to do is go to end the number eight, Nate, trainingsystems.com slash book. We'll get you a free copy. So just throw your email address and I'll send it right over to you. Amazing. My carrier pigeons, put it, in, put it in the mail, you know? <laughs> so you can check that out there. Otherwise, if you want to uh, like stay connected, get, get into uh, my Facebook community. It's, it's free. It's one of my favorite communities online. Super positive. Everyone in there is great. Uh, it's a million dollar body community and you can get there by going to n8trainingsystems.com slash group. Otherwise, you can find me on Instagram. I've been trying to put out funny reels most of the time now, yeah. just because I like them and I don't care if anyone else does. And that's where I, that's where I live now. <laughs> it's too bad you only can like your reels once, your own reels, right? I mean, I, I unlike it so just so I can like it twice. <laughs> I love it. I so love nice. It. I liked it twice. That's it, man. That's it. Hey, man, this is awesome. I appreciate you doing this. Uh, and uh, congrats on the work that you've been doing. I mean, again, the piece around uh, what you're doing for clients and not 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 more than just helping them but motivating them to get where they want to be so again we could go back maintenance progress right go back where they can maintain it themselves and, that, and that's big like you're 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 inspiring in ways that when you can do that make someone self-sufficient man that's that's a whole other level as far as i'm concerned thanks brother i appreciate that yeah i love telling people like hey, i don't want to train you forever I like i need to part ways at some point that's it that's it <laughs> that's it awesome listen thank you my friend for doing this and uh we'll see you soon Back we are here on the podcast, and uh, I really appreciate Nate for joining me here on the Audacious Living Podcast and spending some time uh, uh, sharing his insights. Again, we we had a great conversation about progress, a whole bunch of really really great things, and I really appreciate Nate for doing that. Uh, as well as his book, The Billion Dollar Body Method. Uh, certainly, uh, we'll, we'll leave the coordinates so you can grab a hold of that uh, if you want to check that out. You know. Nate left us with so much things to think about, but if there's just one thing I take from my conversation with him, it would be this. An effective method for, for measuring progress is, is to document it. You know, you, you look at your overall goal and then you figure out the tasks, the milestones that will serve as the indicators as you move towards that. And that's how you chart your progress and that's how you measure how close you are to your goal. Now, you know, as you move through your journey, each completed milestone essentially is, is a step closer to where you're trying to get to. However, there are times when that's not always the case. There are instances when progress, you know, the progress just can't be measured in the traditional fashion or the way you normally are used to. And sometimes it can't always be seen. But that doesn't mean that your progress is non-existent. Again, the approach or how we view progress is very, very important. So even when we don't think that we're making more forward motions, we are. We truly, truly are. Because we're also not falling behind and we're still pointed in the direction of our audacious goal of where we're trying to get to. Hey, listen, if you haven't registered for email notifications of the podcast, please know that you can do so simply by heading over to bestaudaciouslife.com. All you've got to do is enter in your email address and you'll be immediately you'll be alerted every time we've got brand new content that comes out. We've reached the end of another episode. And as always, I got a big, big shout out to uh, our audacious uh, viewers or those lovers of audaciousness. I uh, appreciate uh, the support, that ongoing support. Uh, it's absolutely tremendous and certainly keep it up because it is appreciated. Until next time, stay safe, be kind, show love to one another and be audacious. You've been listening to the Audacious Living Podcast, hosted by Audley Stevenson. If you enjoyed what you heard, be sure to like, subscribe, and share. Until next time, be audacious.